Welcome back to part 7 of this mini-series, Let's Make and Solve a Rubik's Cube in Unity. In the last episode, we added automated movement and the ability to shuffle the cube at the press of a button. In this episode, we'll solve the cube automatically using an external library implementation of the Cochamba two-phase method. We're going to be picking up right where we left off, so if you missed the previous episodes, I do recommend checking them out first. To solve the cube, we're going to use the Cochember two-phase method. The history of Rubik's Cube solving is really interesting. There are loads of cool resources for learning how to solve cubes yourself, and it can be a lot of fun. However, writing our own algorithm is well outside the scope of this series. We'll use an existing method and get much better results than we ever would have doing it ourselves. We're going to implement sub-second solves in under 22 moves. The breakthrough algorithm for solving the cube was found by Morwen Thistlewaite and published in 1981. He did this by subdividing the solve into groups and using lookup tables. Herbert Cochember improved upon Thistlewaite's algorithm in 1992 with a two-phase algorithm. Cochember maintains a website, a cube-solving app, and most importantly for us, provided the code as a Java package which implements his two-phase algorithm using tables that are automatically generated. I had a look around and found a c -sharp implementation on GitHub by user Tremwell. It didn't have any documentation, but I was able to get it going in Unity. Unlike Cochember's Java code, which generates the tables at runtime, Tremwell generated the the tables in advance, bringing the initial solve time down from around 40 seconds to under 3 on my hardware, with subsequent solves for both of them taking fractions of a second. Tremwell did not provide the code to generate the tables, and unfortunately the code is heavily modified so that instead of taking the current state of the cube as an input, it instead takes a list of moves made to a solved cube, then solves the cube that that list of moves would create without using the list. This would work fine if we always knew the scramble that got us to the unsolved state. However, I wanted this to be an unknown. I thought I might be able to reverse engineer his method, but without the documentation, I couldn't do it. Instead, I've gone back and done my own conversion of Cochamba's Java algorithm as a C-sharp package, and have taken inspiration from Tremwell to make the tables in advance. As part of the conversion, I have left all of Cochamba's comments in place, and for the most part, his documentation can be used with the package. This conversion is available on GitHub, and I want to make it very clear that I did not, and probably could not, write 99% of it. I just made a couple of modifications so that we can save the generated tables, and use them instead of generating tables at runtime, and get some additional information, like the time it took to solve the cube. If you are following along, do make sure to download the Unity branch instead of the master branch. Once we have imported the Cochember package into Unity, we need a way to interact with it. On the cube, we can add a new script, solve two-phase, and open it up. We're going to be using the package we just downloaded as a library, so at the top we need to add using Cochemba. We want to solve the current state of the cube, so we need to make sure that we have read the cube before we solve it, and that we know the state of the cube. Public read cube read cube, public cube state cube state. These could be private, I'll fix that if I get around to refactoring. Read cube equals find object of type read cube, cube state equals find object of type cube state. Now we can write a method to solve the cube, public void solver. First we read the cube, read cube read state. Then we need to get the state of the cube as a string. Then we can solve the cube using the Cochember package. The Cochember package returns a string of moves instead of a list, so we'll need to convert the solved moves from a string to a list. Then we can automate the list. Over in the cube state script, we need a way to output the current state of the cube as a string in the order that the Cochamba script expects it. We can do this one side at a time, so first let's build a method for returning the state of a single side as a string. String get side string, that takes in a list of type game object side. First we'll set a new variable string side string to an empty string, then loop through each face in the side. For each game object face inside, then we can add the face name to the string. String side plus equals face dot name. Once every face has been added to the string, we can return it. Return side string. The Cochemba documentation shows us that we need to pass each side in the order top left to bottom right, and we are already doing that for building the cube map. However, the order the sides are passed in the string are important too, so we need to make sure that we pass our sides in the order up, right, front, down, left, and back. To build the full string, we can use a new public string, get state string, string state string equals an empty string, then we concatenate the result of passing each side to get the side string method. State string plus equals get side string, and that takes in up, 
state string plus equals get side string and that takes in right state string plus equals get side string and that takes in front state string plus equals get side string and that takes in down state string plus equals get side string and that takes in left state string plus equals get side string and that takes in back then we can return the state string in the solve two phase script, we can now set the current state of our cube to a string. String move string equals cube state dot get state string. We'll just print this out for now. Print move string. In the editor, we can create a new button. I'm just going to copy my shuffle button, rename it, and change the text. Instead of passing in the automate script, I'm going to pass the solve two phase script and the solve method. If we hit play, we can see that all the faces are added to the string in the right order. However, we only need the first letter from each face. Back in the get side string method of the cube state script, we can change this to get the face name at index zero, or the first letter in the string as a char. Then convert that char to a string with the two string function. Now if we hit play in the editor and select solve, we are getting the string we're looking for. The Kochemba package kicks out some information about the solve, so we do need a string to save this information to as well. String info equals an empty string. We also need to build the tables because I don't want our players to have to wait 40 seconds after pressing the solve button. We can wait so our players don't have to. So the first time we call the package, we will build the tables. String solution equals search runtime dot solution and we pass it the move string, pass out the info string and set build tables to be true. Every other time we will use the method that reads from the pre-generated tables. String solution equals search dot solution and that takes in the move string, and again we pass out the info string. We'll comment this out for now. There are other parameters we can play with, like the number of moves we can stop at if we don't care about finding shorter solutions, but the default settings provide sub-second solves on my hardware, so I imagine they're fine. We could experiment with this if releasing for mobile. As we are getting a solution in the form of a string, and our automate script uses a list, we will need to convert the string into a list, List of type string solution list equals string to list and that takes in solution. Luckily the moves in the string are separated by an empty space. List of type string solution list equals a new list of type string. And that list is made from solution dot split a new string array split by a space. And we can remove any empty entries system dot string split options dot remove empty entries. Return solution list. We can create a new variable to house this list list of type string solution list equals the string to list of the solution string. Then we can automate the list and print out the info. Automate.move list equals solution list print info. Before we test this out, I'm going to do a little housekeeping. Over in the pivot rotation script, we can make sure that the dragging logic also requires the cube to not be auto rotating, and we can switch this logic to a late update as the final movement can be executed after everything else has been calculated. Late update is called once per frame at the end. Back in the editor, we can hit play, make at least one move so there is something to solve, and wait for like 40 seconds. During this time, the tables are being generated, but as we set the build tables variable to be true, it should also save a copy of the tables. If you're using this package outside of Unity and want to save the tables, do be aware that some additional folders based on the Unity file structure will also be created. Now that it has solved the first scramble, the tables remain loaded into memory, so we can have a little play. We also get a warning that the version of the search we are using is slow. If we jumble this up a bit and hit solve, we get an almost instant solve. Once we have finished playing, if we wait for a second or two, the new tables folder should be picked up by the Unity editor. Now that we have tables, we can comment out the search runtime method and use the search method instead. If pre-built in the editor, the tables do not need to be pre-built by our players at all, so we only need to use this method in production. The tables do take up around 4.2 megabytes, so it's up to you if you want to build them in advance or make them part of an installation process as the package that makes them is tiny in comparison. It's only around 44 kilobytes total. Unfortunately, the time it takes for the tables to load can cause an intermittent glitch where the readcube method lags behind the automate script, causing the wrong sides to rotate. To fix this, we can call the solver method on the initial cube in its solved state once the scene is loaded. This has the added benefit of removing the time delay before the first solve as the tables are loaded at the start. We can create a bool do once that starts off true. Then in the update method, if the game has started and do once is true, we can set do once to false and call the solver method. If cube state dot started and do once, do once equals false solver. Back in the editor, hit play and we can shuffle up our cube. 
We can use the shuffle button, watch as the pieces move into a random position, or we could move the pieces manually. Hit solve and there it goes. And there we have it! We have built and solved a Rubik's Cube in Unity. If you've stuck with this to the end, then wow, congratulations, we have covered loads. This mini-series has been a long time in development, and there were times I really thought I might not get it finished. If you've enjoyed this series, then please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.